Welcome to Transform Your Mind, Body, and Spirit with Lisa Dwoskin. Lisa has been a fitness professional for the past 20 years, as well as a fitness competitor. She's now a life coach and is ready to help educate and guide you with nutrition, exercise techniques, and positive mindset. You're invited to call in and ask Lisa any question about how you can jumpstart your very own transformation and become a better you. Call toll-free 1-800-889-0267. Visit her website at lisadwoskin.com or visit her on Facebook at BBL Fitness. Do you want to be healthier, happier, and live a longer and more fulfilled life? Then get ready to transform your mind, body, and spirit and to emerge a new you. Now here's Lisa. Hi, welcome to Transform Your Mind, Body, Spirit. Thank you for joining me today. I would like to uh, thank my sponsors, Children's Medical Research Institute and Franovic Designs and Grand Palms Resort. Soul Rain, soulisreal.com, and also Lycopene Skin Care. Dave, you want to talk about Lycopene Skin Care a little bit? That's the only <laughs> sunblock I've ever used. People say, how do you keep good skin? I said, well, I don't bake myself, and I use Dr. Weinberger's Canthaxin Thin Lycopene. Lycopene, how oh, do you spell it? I got it, it for my mom, everything. L-Y-C-O-P-E-N. E, lycopene, which is that uh, active ingredient. Yeah, tomato, the right? Free radical scavenger that's common and abundant in tomatoes and a lot of other organic produce. And what I really like about Dr. Weinberger's formula is that it's all organic and it's natural. He figured out years ago that, um, you know, the FDA and the um, drug companies, it's, it's a big... Um, it's a big scam. Can you say scam on the radio? Yeah, uh, anyways, yeah. it's a big scam, and you have to bribe the right politicians in order to sell people toxic junk that doesn't actually function, that they make for pennies in a polypeptide synthesizer. So what he said was, 100 years ago, 50, 60 years ago, when it was hard to get these organic drugs to everybody, we would resynthesize the similar molecule that was active, but not as good, and then we could give it to more people. But he said, now, with all the obstructions, grow the organic substances, you know, isolate the active ingredients in ultra centrifuges, and give people the actual food drugs, the actual, you know, medical botany that actually works without the side effects. And they can, so he's got prescription grade items three times as effective at one-third the cost that you don't need a prescription for. It's great. Thank you. See, you, may, you, you spoke on the spot. Thank you for that. <laughs> Actually, my mind, my, my, my brain wasn't even engaged. I just... And his you know. website is www.spell it out for me. Like a com. You can look up Dr. Gary Weinberger. He's a board certified... He's a gynecologist. He's a surgeon. He was a teacher at and professor at NYU Medical School, and right. also a dermatologist. So he's a brilliant we'll guy. Have him on Saved here. my father's life when no one else could. Just a brilliant guy. I'm so glad to have met him in my lifetime here. And we had him on. You met him, Freddie. Remember? Yes, absolutely. He'll be on again. So I had my big photo shoot yesterday. You saw my pictures, Freddie? Yes, I saw one picture. They were amazing. They yes, were um, very they, nicely done. Good the taste. shoot was about six hours with Franovic Designs. Jessica Rivera was the makeup artist, um, I believe. They'll all be on here on May 1st. With what me. are you going to do with those pictures? I don't know. What are you going to do with them? I don't know. <laughs> are you, you, you going to... You're going to get me on TV, right? Wait a minute. I'm the wait, new Oprah well, Winfrey. Who, who, owns, who owns the print? You or them? No, or? they're going to give me all the pictures for oh, sure so that I can use. Isn't oh, it going yeah. into the calendar, the 2017 calendar, the Lisa Dwanski? <laughs> well, I think fine. we'll put them up at a... I pre-ordered 10 copies. Oh, this well, we'll is We'll make sure first. you get them first photo shoot I've done that isn't in my bikini. Isn't that great? I don't I don't want it. <laughs> no, he doesn't want them. No, but they were very high were nice. fashion oh, gowns. They look really Fran nice. You did a big design golf course and everything. Right? Oh, it was amazing. It was so amazing. But let me tell you, it was exhausting. To be a model for seven hours with four-inch heels, well, you're not exhausting. Supposed to say, you're not supposed to say that. It's just I had a wonderful experience. It was no, easy. No, it was wonderful, but it was harder than my boot camp and spinning classes. Oh, stop. Totally. stop. Four-inch <laughs> heels, you were 6'6". Six, six. I know. I know. Was, you want to be 10'7". Right? <laughs> it's true. No, I was a giant, but it was great. So thank you, Victor, for that beautiful fashion photo shoot. And we did it at the Grand Palms Resort, which is my sponsor. Beautiful. You saw the waterfall? I saw that, yeah. It was gorgeous. Beautiful. Good stuff. Yeah, I was very, very happy. So thank you for that. They'll be here on May 1st talking about the photo shoot. Oh, the uh, photographers? Yeah, all oh, of them. Good. All eight Well, you know, we'll, we'll get the prints and blow them up and put them in the room. 
Yeah, all over. I'll have a poster right behind you. Yeah, all over. Bigger oh than God. your poster. That's Two boys right. from Brooklyn, That's right? right. Make it 12 feet tall. Oh. <laughs> right out the window. <laughs> so, speaking of photo shoots and being out there in the fashion world, I want to talk with Sarah. Sarah Solstice? Sarah Solstice. Okay, so you're a musician, and you've been on a lot of different TV events and red carpet events, and you do a lot of spiritual healing through music. So talk to us a little bit about that. Correct. So years ago, I had a career in the pop industry. I was part of a group called Third Phase, and we opened for Britney Spears for a whole tour. Oh, wow. We were at the Grammys, so we were in that realm. Mm -hmm. And then I I left that, and I wanted to leave it permanently. So I was in Hawaii, I went to Egypt to study, and I got more into, like, the spiritual energetics of life in general. And I was, along the lines, being called back. You know, I would hear music in my dreams. So now I've embarked on this new journey of taking the music that I'm hearing in, like, dream meditation state and sharing it. Wow, that's amazing. So wait a minute, do you sing? I do sing. You do sing. So you're a singer. I'm a singer. Well, I got that part right. You can hear it in singer. her voice. Yeah, and singer. And songwriter, too, right? Songwriter also. Mm. Um, I rarely sit down to write a song, but I'll hear a song. So I'll be doing something in my day, and I'll just hear a fully composed song already. Mm-hmm. So then my task is to learn software and see if I can learn this instrument and get it down to share. So do you play instruments, too? Lightly. I play a bit of guitar, yeah. some piano, just enough to produce, a little saxophone, oh, just, just cool. a little of each one. Is she going to sing today? Yeah, maybe we'll let her at the end a little bit. (laughs) And Dave sings, too. (laughs) Well, it's the llama thing, you know, the tritone, the... And the guitar. But before we get into the Buddhist llama over here, who's very shy, let me introduce Ronnie. He is a filmmaker, documentary, he does documentaries. Excuse me. And you did a beautiful... I don't know what to call it, like a video or something on on Facebook you put together for an event that you're having, which I'm hosting, and I'm very excited about, and she's singing at it. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, the event is coming up on the 23rd. It's a week from, or it's actually this Saturday coming up. It's at Ocean Manor Hotel. The benefit's <clears throat> going to the Peanut Butter Jelly Project. Which I is love that. It's Fort Lauderdale. Yes. And at the event, basically, we're going to have live painters. We have Nicole Samness, John Rice, Larry uh, Calabrese that's going to be painting live. We also have spoken talk, word talk, poetry. Talk right, forget, don't look at her. Talk <laughs> right into that mic. We also have some spoken word poetry from Chaos Theory, and Sarah Solstice is going to be performing while I do live visuals, projecting live visuals to help uh, tell the story of her music. And then we have the main guest is Judy Satori, who's flying in from New Zealand. She's actually here right now at a New Life Expo. Mm. But what she does is basically speak what's called light language. And light language, basically, the frequencies of that helps uh, expand the dormant DNA inside of our consciousness, so you start becoming a little bit more enlightened and tuned to everything in life. I love that. You know, when I walked into the studio today, well, actually, when the three of you came here, it became so much more spiritual because you all are very spiritual. You can feel the energy. It's so cool how when you have people who are enlightened, well, and Freddie, you're very spiritual. Don't know what you're Should I about. tell your secret? No. <laughs> I keep talking about the show. Okay, anyway, when you get a group of people like this together and, and you feel the energy, it, it opens up the awareness to look at those two looking at us over there on the other side, the board <laughs> operators. Hi, guys. Hi, girls. No, but really, you even said it. You can hear me, right? You you even said it when they walked in, how you feel the vibe, right? The vibe of the tribe. The vibe totally. of the heart tribe. So what did you feel when my guests walked in? Like I want to hang with them. Yeah, exactly, right? I want to go to Burning Man and just hang and just, you know, chill and all good. We'll make jewelry. We'll make music. We'll make Holy love. Holy smokes. Love Are you coming back? We're bringing Freddie, too. He's going to Absolutely. be the... Absolutely. Yeah. He's, He's going to be our golden calf. I got no problem with a golden calf. I want to calf. hang out with Freddie. I a love it. Calf. I love it. I love how you guys are, and I can't wait for your event. And by the way, I have a book signing event this Thursday, April 21st. When did that happen? Because I'm, oh, I'm doing a lot, Freddie. You didn't tell me nothing about no book signing. And you You got a meeting on Friday, too. Don't forget that. Oh, yeah. Right. I got my text over there. Anyway, the book signing is at Celebrity Sports and Plantation from 6 to 8 p.m. 6 in the morning? 6 to 8 p.m. 
p.m. <laughs> Are you the one nervous now or what? No, I, I just, I, that's a big spring on me. I didn't know that. And we got to get down there to film a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, and then I'm uh, hosting his event. I mean, I, I'm not I know, sleeping. I see your name on the don't, card. Don't I look great? Really cool. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, my next guest over here in the corner is my very good friend for about a couple years, Seafood Dave. And he has been like my spiritual guru, really. I've always wanted one. <laughs> but you have woken me up like to learn about so much. This guy's like an encyclopedia. Anything you want to know and don't the light's about to yeah, fall, on your head. fall on your head. Come if up it does, a little it's bit. Hurt. There you go. Then you know what? He'll levitate it off the no, ground. <laughs> Maybe that's what was happening. Anyway, talk to you us. You gotta a get bit. closer to the mic, Dave. Talk to us a little bit about yourself. No, I can't do that. Being With your Buddhist, Superman being shirt. Being a Buddhist Lama, I'm not allowed to speak about myself because I don't really exist as a separate being. He's 900 so years old. Did 960 you know that? 964 this year. You don't Does look he a look You don't look a day no. over nine. He moisturizes 964. you. You look beautiful. He's moisturizing. Well, I just use Dr. Weinberger's Lycopin <laughs> right. skin www.lycopin.com. <laughs> We're just joking, of course. I get into the ocean, you know, I drink enough water. And really, it's the, um, <clears throat> you know, just trying to be in the right place plus i'm really only you know biologically i'm only 27 so that's my that's <laughs> every my year i know it gets younger and younger okay we have sue on the on the phone right now are you there i'm here so sue is a twin flame priestess which i've talked to you a little bit about on instagram have you seen her page on instagram I have. twin flame lovers it's all about sex and intimacy and love and <laughs> It's great. As a Buddhist Hi, Lama, I'm not allowed to speak about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be laughing. What, Sue? How are you? Good, good. How are you? I can't I'm good. Okay. Yeah, does everyone hear her? Okay. So now that we have the full group here, our topic of discussion is about love. True love, unconditional love, universal love. So... Let's start with Seafood Dave in the corner. How do you define unconditional love? Well, that <clears throat> actually there is no unconditional love or there's no platonic love. There's no filial love, familial love, intimate love. There's only one definition. There's only one. I had a friend who was a uh, seminarian, Roman Catholic seminarian, and he told me, he said, love is willing the good of another. Love is only willing the good of another. There is no more involved. There's no subjectivity. There's no quantitative alternatives. That's all there is to it. It has nothing to do with what you're getting out of it. It has nothing to do with if it benefits you or anyone or anything. It wills the good of another. Anything else might be a distortion, is a distortion of that pure, that pure spiritual definition. What you just said, I love about what you're getting from another. It's not what you get from another. Because our society thinks love is about most people that aren't enlightened like we are, <laughs> most 90% of the human population. They feel they need to gain something in order to love. They want something. They need something. They want to control. They want to be obsessive, jealous. It's really bad how they define love. That, that's the fallen world, the world of illusions interfering, disrupting the actual connection to your spiritual nature and, and true love. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's, there's a more symbolic there's a lot of beautiful imagery in ancient bone and ancient buddhist ayurvedic um, cosmology that illustrates why this conflict comes into play where we start defining love as very much the opposite of what it actually is um, and, and we can get we can touch base on that later after our yeah. other luminaries. Let me let contribute. me get thank you. Let me get to before you two, uh, Sue, since you haven't said too much. <laughs> we just got you on the phone. What is your definition of unconditional love? Um, I agree with everything he just said as well. I believe that's an expression of love. Um, 
and love to me is something really um, indescribable in the sense of we can see the effects just like we can see the effects of wind but we can't see it you know we and so there's ways we express it, express it and one is willing the goodness for another um, but in regards to unconditional love I feel it's really choosing for yourself that um, no matter what happens in your life um, you are going to keep your your heart open you're going to choose love uh, to extend love from the center of your being no matter what you experience or who does you wrong or you know it's it's un, it's unconditional in the sense that it's not exclusive to just one person you know it's um, it's for yourself you choose love no matter what unconditionally for yourself and that keeps your heart open so um and i used to think unconditional love was okay like from a parent to a child and and then you know then you have people that you don't like very much and it's like okay well that's conditional but really it has to apply to just your everyday state of being you know and how you move in, in your life and you just take it with you 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 embody that you've you vibrate the, at that level, and you just it keeps opening and opening as your heart remains open instead of that tendency to close your heart. Yeah, that's very true. Okay, Sarah, what's your definition? I love that. I love everything she said um, because it is. It's this effective, productive life force that comes out of all of us, right? So this love that is at our center that nurtures everything or enlivens everything or makes everything work or makes everything go off and be productive. Mm -hmm. So this love that's coming out of us, we can choose to access it or choose not to access it. So like she's saying, in any situation, we have this wellspring of this unconditional love that we can decide to pour it all over everything and then experience it. Or we can decide to be involved in the human game and, like you're saying, all mm -hmm. these others, you know, maybe not experiencing it. Right. So. Right. Exactly. Okay, Ronnie, what do you think? I agree with everyone. And to me, <laughs> like, when I think of unconditional love, it's it boils down really simply to God in action. It's once you're choosing from your heart, that's, that's coming from source. And that is straight God moving you because you have no other conditions there it's just what is necessary to happen mm -hmm. i like that okay freddie well i'm not gonna agree with everybody because that would be boring I, <laughs> I i think that the the bottom line is that people say that they want to love unconditionally and then as soon as something hits the fan well that goes out the window i mean how many people have met in florida that have been through bad relationships and they used to believe in one thing and they stopped believing it mm -hmm. and then if it gets even worse they start believing in themselves so i think unconditional what's bigger the word love or the word unconditional true right that's true i mean what does it come down to right Just well and said. and i agree with freddie as well because like you and I spoke about, I'm new. Even though I published a book on mind, body, spirit, I'm new into the whole spiritual enlightenment phase. I've always been a fitness, exercise, nutrition, balance the mind, body, spirit. But this event that I'm going to, that I'm hosting, <laughs> like everything you all are bringing me into, I'm so excited about and meeting Dave on a sidewalk where he just kind of dropped from the sky. You've taught me so much about spiritual enlightenment. And I tend to agree a little bit with, with Freddie because Dave and I talk about this all the time. Because I go back and forth, back and forth with my ex-husband relationship. Not that we've ever gone back together. Don't worry, new girlfriend, we're not together. <laughs> What I mean is I go back and thought of stories where I share with Dave how I w used to handle things and how I handle things now. And I've come so far, but there is something inside of me that I try to be this spiritual enlightened person with the unconditional love without the thoughts or the ego and the anger and that kind of stuff. But then th there's still the human side of me which it's almost like a tug of war and I don't know how 
I know it's going to slowly get more and more to where it's less ego, more spirit, but how do you really become unconditional love? Like, really? I love my kids uncondition unconditionally, but there's also conditions. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, Dean. That's a good point. And the, the way to step into the process is by doing. You know there's an old adage that... Um, be careful of what you think because thoughts become words, words become actions, actions become habits, and habits define who you are. They become your character. So, if you can't think in those terms, I, I tell people a shortcut that's actually very effective. I say, pretend this, be this, do this. Different people, it works in different ways. You're on a stage and you're acting a part. 24 hours a day. Why would you not want that? Why would you not? And within a few months, you can't get out of character. You know, when you live in a temple, you do what monks do. And you think like monks think. And you are like monks. And, and you know, different people come to the where we're at on the mountain from different places. And in... Buddhism, Ayurvedism, Hinduism, it all doesn't matter whether we're struggling up the mountain, whether we were halfway there, or whether we're strolling down the mountain when we meet. Um, so some of us naturally just feel this way about things. From the time we were eight years old, we always looked at things that way, and we didn't deviate. And other people are coming there from a different perspective, so just keep acting that way. Whatever people do, whatever the fallen world of illusions around us compels us to do, remember that a person of consciousness acts. Only an animal reacts. Nothing that can happen mm -hmm. to you has any f effect on you. You be, you be at the center of this stage. Whatever else is happening, you are putting on this command performance. You are the CEO. You are the Donald Trump or the Hillary. You, you keep doing what you're doing. Everything around you will start rotating around you. And you start defining the world around you. Right, that makes sense. Did that answer your question well, Freddie? No, it does. And I wanted to touch a little bit about the event that you're going to be hosting, where mm -hmm. I guess being uh, in touch with your energy levels and increasing your energy levels your awareness, exactly what Dave was just talking about. Can you increase your levels? In other words, if your level is here and you become more cognizant of who you are and what's going on around you, can you increase those levels and what happens? You know, good things begin to happen when that percentage begins to rise and you begin to make become aware, whether it's through music or art or just sitting and having a conversation. What happens? How does that whole, that whole thing change your outlook on life, which I, I'm, I'm sort of touching on this because I think this is a very exciting program oh, that so you're going to be excited. having. And yeah. I want you to name the date, you know, the date, the time. Oh, we're going to talk about it more at the end. Yes, for, for, for people who are not our, not myself, of course, but are truly enlightened illuminaries on the panel yeah, today. Yeah, let's hear from you. Yeah, guys. what are, when we're dealing with people who are aspiring to do things in a better way in their life and think in a better way in their life, in your own personal experience, people you have interacted with, how, what techniques have they used to move closer to where they want to be? And then Sue will get right to you. Don't. Yes. Yeah, so we want to hear from Sue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but go ahead. You guys explain. Um, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, something that we find very effective is fun. A lot of times we're in a situation and it seems so dramatic, and we can know for sure that if there's any tension or if there's any dense experience, emotion that's going on, other than enjoyable love, uh, you're for sure thinking that you're this limited human. For sure, right? Mm -hmm. So it becomes a big joke. Oh my God, I can't believe I thought that I was this limited human without access to oh, my I joy, my delight, that's my play, true. whatever. Mm -hmm. So then as long as you're in the situation and you, and you feel that tension come up and you feel yourself go from like, joy, I love everything, I'm synchronized, to that like, uh, I'm confused, I don't know what to do, what's going on here. You can at least notice that. Oh, that's so funny that I'm confused so, right now. 
right? Right. And yeah. You bring yourself to yeah. so self sense. love too. You're like, yeah. oh, you're so adorable. Look yeah. at you. You're you're confused right now. You're stressing <laughs> out. This is precious. Like you're mm. precious. And then it opens the gateways for us to connect back to that. Like, okay, love. Okay, joy. Okay, all of us together. Mm. And then you stream yourself back into that. Well, and you made the best point, and we're going to talk about this after the commercial break. Self-love. That's the problem with our society. Mm -hmm. They don't love themselves. So that's a big topic we're going to talk about. But, Sue, thank you. That was beautiful. Sue, go ahead. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that? Before we get into the self-love. Yeah, I, um, I just love what she just said, um, <clears throat> and it is, it's a, it's And she's gone. Uh-oh. She's calling back in, though. She's, she's She had another she'll... message. She got channeled to another dimension, <laughs> but she'll be back. I and the point that. is, the fun, yeah, the fun was great. Keep it fun. Like Albert Einstein said, um, your mentor, um, he said, creativity will always win out over intellect. And Lama Chogyam Trungpa, the most prolific Buddhist writer of the 20th century, wrote in Shambhala Warrior, he said the failing of the Western world is their inability to see the humor of their lives. So keeping yeah. it fun, whatever yeah, is going on, right? That that's one. No, that's 100%. It's like I tell a lot of people, my friends uh, in my inner circle, it's like, what's the purpose of having having that stress so you, if you have something you're going through in your life it's you, ha- you have to look at the at the better outlook of it and it's like a lot of people call it being optimistic and at times mm-hmm. but I, I don't feel that way I feel it's just once once you allow yourself to to have the fun and joy in, inside of inside of yourself you're releasing all that all that negative energy and making more room for mm. the positive energy and positive things to start coming in, for in, sure. into with you yeah i love that sue are you back on yes i'm sorry my mind dropped no don't worry so we're talking about fun and having more fun in our mm-hmm. lives humor mm-hmm. so go ahead yeah so it boils down to a choice of uh, you know we're so conditioned like okay if this happens in your life then this is the reaction that society says it's appropriate or that you've been trained to react a certain way. Mistrained. Taking a moment, stepping back, like you can choose happiness. You can choose to go, you know, being sentenced to prison and you can't change the circumstances, but you can change your internal response. And, you know, we are, and that involves fun, you know, and happiness. I think just the choosing happiness in that path it's it's it is a path in enlightenment. You know, it's unconditional that you're you're invulnerable. You know, you're invulnerable to what the world throws at you because mm-hmm. you always have. You're always that choice in your internal state of how you're going to experience your life. And you know, and I think we're all bottom line, common denominator, seeking our own good, seeking happiness. And, and we can we, we have it accessible to us to make that choice. Yeah, I love that. Choose happiness, fun, humor. So my book is right on point because that's all I talk about. So I must be very <laughs> spiritually enlightened more than I thought I was. By the way, that's metamorphosized, www.lisadawaskin.com. You can buy my book at Amazon or at Barnes, Barnes & Noble's online. We're going to a commercial break. We'll be right back talking about self-love. Thank you. If you're a golfer or just someone who wants the best hotel stay in South Florida, your wish has been answered. Introducing the Grand Palms Hotel Spa and Golf Resort. The Grand Palms Hotel Spa and Golf Resort, located in beautiful South Florida, gives everyone the opportunity to enjoy peace, beauty, and tranquility. 137 comfortable rooms and suites located on a 27-hole golf course with all the amenities that you'd expect of a first-class golf facility, a professional golf pro shop, excellent restaurant equipped with a full-service bar, and a staff that is ready to cater to your every whim. The Grand Palms Hotel Spa and Golf Resort is paradise waiting for you. The Grand Palms is truly a golfer's paradise. The golf course surrounded by luxurious homes and the most exclusive 
exquisite landscaping in the area. You might even catch a glimpse of some celebrity golfers swinging their golf clubs. Whether you're an avid golfer or just coming to the area for business or relaxation, you won't find a more comprehensive resort experience for the value. Located minutes from South Florida's famed beaches and some of the best shopping in the country, there's something for everyone at the Grand Palm Spa and Golf Resort. If you're looking to book a wedding, party, or speaking engagements, this is the place for you. Grand Palms Catering is the best in town with gorgeous and spacious garden rooms and clubhouses overlooking the golf course. Grand Palms is the best kept secret in Pembroke Pines. Call today, 954-431-8800 and book your reservation to one of the most beautiful golf resorts in Florida. 954-431-8800 is the number you need to enjoy a touch of paradise for your getaway. According to the CDC and the FDA, after receiving the HPV vaccine, thousands of young women have reported convulsions, crippling fatigue, paralysis, blindness, and other severe reactions. In 2013, one of the developers of the HPV vaccine admitted on air that more than 70 young girls were known to have died after being vaccinated. Recently, the American Academy of Pediatricians issued a warning about the HPV vaccine, Gardasil, causing premature menopause and ovarian failure in young women. In 2013, Japan became the first country to withdraw its recommendation for the HPV vaccine. Denmark now has five regional uptake facilities for girls who were healthy before they received HPV shots and are now exhibiting serious medical harm. The makers of the HPV vaccine claim it protects against ovarian cancer from developing in 20 to 30 years, but the vaccine was approved after less than five years of testing. It's okay to ask questions about vaccine safety. Learn more at cmsri.org, paid for by the Children's Medical Safety Research Institute. You are transforming your mind, body, and spirit with fitness professional and life coach, Lisa Dwoskin. You can call in at any time, toll-free, 1-800-889-0267 to speak with Lisa. Now, let's get back to this week's show. Okay, we're back. And if you would like to call in, please give us a call, 800-889-0267, to talk to any one of us and ask us any questions. Before we jump back into the subject, <clears throat> excuse me, about self-love, let's talk a little bit again about this event. So, I'm hosting this event. When is it now? <laughs> this Saturday night. I'm kidding. <laughs> April 23rd. How am I going to stay up till, uh, by the way, what, Dave's going to keep me awake because you're coming too, right? I got to come to the event. <laughs> you Saturday? have to. I gave you flyers. I was supposed to go see Martin. But I, I guess he yeah, can come you here. have to. So I he stay awake. Here. You have yeah. to. He dances on tables and uh, gets crazy. That's, that's and, not me. And that's he doesn't even look drink. Look David, or that's Martin. That's my evil yeah, twin. He doesn't even drink alcohol at all. I'll drink all the alcohol. My evil twin drinks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one 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 and eleven eleven is my favorite numbers. I'm all about. My book is all about eleven eleven, one one one. Anyone who knows and is close to me gets texts all the time, 111, 11, 11, <laughs> Freddie and Dave both. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. Anyway, I love that 11, 11, but it's a very spiritual number. So the event is 7, 11 to 111, Saturday night, April 23rd. It's going to be an amazing event. So everyone needs to come, and we'll put it up on the website, all of our websites. Yeah, the night is made up of the spiritual art community of South Florida, from all the way from Miami, and like this community really started off, and from from what I've known, like with the Moksha family down in Miami, mm -hmm. and what they've really done is bring together different artists and really using uh, their art to to get people in tune to spirituality. So it's like it's, oh, it's made together with. The, the poets are there, chaos theory, their, their poetry speaks to, uh, to people to get within so they can find who they are. Now, you know, talking about this, I'm so excited to get involved with all these groups, but some of my friends, and we won't even mention my father because that's a whole other subject, but some of them <laughs> would think like, oh my God, Lisa, you're going to come back with this long hippie dress and a dot in the middle of your forehead and you're going to be smoking <laughs> and like, hey, let's all get spiritual. <laughs> So how can I, where, where can I get a where can I get Watch a dot? Because in a I couple a months dot? that'll be me, right? Can I get a dot? <laughs> can I get a dot? <laughs> no, but really, how can we tell people that it's not about Getting hippie done? peace? Like you know, it's about being raising your level of conscious awareness, being more mindful, and living in the now. How do we explain this? To but you the know, people? you got to remember, in the '60s, everybody was 
whatever they were doing, they were doing. How could any of us remember the 60s? (laughs) (laughs) You can look it up. Oh, 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 that. Okay, it was was all about... (laughs) We do have the internet, that's true. That's right, but it was all about that spirituality and... Yeah, of course. I and mean, Dave, you're 900 years old. You can't remember That's the 60s. True. I, I was somebody oh, else then, though. I was someone else then. I was in a temple in Tibet. We the, the 60s passed us by there in Tibet. Okay, back to the question. So how do we tell the people, really? You guys answer. Or Sue, you want to fill in on this one? We can't forget about Sue on the phone. How do we get the people to... you just did. You just described it perfectly. I mean... Um, you know, raising your consciousness and your awareness is no longer exclusive to, you know, hippies. And, I mean, it's really about the quality of your life and the quality of your relationships and the, the inner work that we do. We see that, in, you know, in, in our environment and in our situation. So um, I think you just did a great job describing it. Like uh, thank you. See, I'm a lot better than I thought. It's so, so <laughs> This show is about me, of course. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, it's your show. I wouldn't come if, you know, Miss Florida wasn't here. Wait, why, why? Dave's a Capricorn like me, so that's why what? we're He's like the Capricorn. leaders. He's a Capricorn leading the party train. Buddhist, 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 Buddhist lamas can't have a yeah. sign. They told, they forbade yeah. me. 900-year-old Capricorn. Yeah, I was born on May 7th. 10:52. That's See not. How we're always there trying to even, steal the show. There the weren't two even Capricorns. Capricorns back then. I mean, there wasn't even a calendar then. <laughs> Wait, the narwhals. Remember the, the, the what? shirt that you have? My kids are always thinking about the narwhals. They're fishes with a horn, like mm-hmm. a like a unicorn. Okay, let's get back on let's point back here. On. Okay, let's get back to. You. I want to devolve into unicorns. Of course, all the hippies do. Ronnie, I want you to tell me how we could explain to people, just to say, raise your level of conscious awareness, like, how can we get people out of being fearful for learning about spirituality? That's a very interesting question. Um, To me, I feel the best way to approach people with this message is just to let them know that there's, there's people. Well, first of all, people actually start getting weirded out because they, they, they have their religion that they've been programmed to, to believe since they were born, mm-hmm. and basically, like with spirituality, it's taking a diff, uh, all those different religions are still coming from that same, same universal message, mm-hmm. a heart center message of love, and that's really what all this is about. It's taking people with different paths, different journeys in their life. Mm-hmm. And putting them together, and then once once you have all those people together, you have the synchronicities that just start flowing. The energy starts mm-hmm. starts to rise together. Yeah. And that's yeah, true about I the religious it. message, the core message. You're absolutely right, but it gets horribly lost in the mundane, political, mm-hmm. social nature. What what people actually actually get from their so-called religion is just some bizarre, twisted, after effect of the real message never gets to them unfortunately Mm -hmm. unless they make that effort i think as sue kept pointing out and everyone on the panel kept using the word choice you know choose to look into your religion as i did when i was a little boy look into the religion and study it and find out about it and then you'll get to that spiritual core you know yeah because spirituality isn't religion Uh and that's what people get like a little freaked out about it can be mutually exclusive and you know (laughs) it really can because Uh you know I was talking with a group about that just just this past week about how the most important thing for you to exercise free will about and actually choose in life, you never, ever get any choice on whatsoever your religion, your philosophy. No choice at all. It's foisted. It's forced. It's free will is instantly gone from from Mm -hmm. it unless you make the effort of being, Mm -hmm. you know, conscious about it. Okay, let's well, let's go to self love because if we start talking about religion, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at, look at all the energy you have in this room. You have somebody on the phone from Texas. You got a nine hundred year old Buddha over here. You, you got somebody who sings and yes, an artists isn't that great? in the room. I mean, you can feel the energy in the room, right. and, and it, you know you're, you're bringing everything together mm. so that you can talk about different things. And I think they've put it eloquently. Everybody gets a chance. To, to put something into the pie. I think that the uniqueness about what's going on right now, I think Connecticut felt it when they came in, mm. is that you got a whole bunch of ingredients right now going on. 
you know and, and you can sense it you can feel it it's there yeah and it's it, like they said you have to pick you have choice you have mm. to pick to be part of that program and it rubs yeah. off because being around you too I could already feel that you see it. my life is going to change even more yeah. than it's already changed meeting you and Freddie, you're extremely spiritual too. We'll keep, nah. we'll, Why does she we'll, keep saying uh, that? Because she's being facetious. She's no, 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 no. I, no he we, is. we had an agreement that she was never going to bring that up. I'm not allowed to say what, but let me tell you, he's more spiritual than all of us put That's together. Not That's not true. true. <laughs> so That's not anyway, true. okay, let's talk about self-love. So I feel that a lot of people don't love themselves, and and I can tell you, as a trainer and a life coach, everyone I meet almost every day tells me. They could be kind and loving to others, but they can't to themselves. That's right. Which is just shocking to me. But and why does that happen, Lisa? I just I, I think they're afraid. They have a lot of fear, and I think they just don't tune into themselves. They need to meditate, and they need to be kinder and loving to themselves. I think too many people feel guilty and it goes back to what we're always talking about they okay. feel like they have to need things want things prove things to others because that's how i was growing up and i had to self-teach myself to become more centered more uh, grounded and meditate and listen to what was within which is what you guys are talking about love can i just say something <laughs> yeah I love you so much. I uh, just feel so good. I love yes. you too. <laughs> you guys are so awesome. You're awesome. She's, you know, she, I just got to give her a shout out because she was helping your show when That's I was right. on your show. She still does. Then she heard me speak and, and she came to help on my show mm -hmm. out of her own free will. Then she asked me if she could hire me as a life coach. I told her, no way. I'm going to be your life coach for free because I think you're awesome. So thank you. thank you. You really are. And she speaks like 12 different uh, voices, like an actress. <laughs> She's a voice enthusiast. That's Voice better than speaking overs. languages. What do you want to hear? Just tell her to speak one, anything. <laughs> Do you want to French ones? Do you want French? I'll do French. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I also like doing English lots. You see that? She's great. Oh, That's you're better amazing. than actually speaking French. But oh, she's cute. And you know what? The fact that I touched you and the fact that I touch one person listening to this radio show, the fact that my book can help one person or my gym that I own, that that's why I'm here doing this. Not to like toot my own horn or go from my ego and talk from my ego. It's because I really want to help people. So thank you. That touched my heart. Well, I see, I see your work. I've seen who you have worked with and how you've brought them full circle Aww. back to being something. And the amazing mm -hmm. thing, the amazing thing about all of this is that the more you do it, the bigger it grows. I was a big skeptic at the beginning. I no, said, you never told me that. I was true. I said, I said, you know, this is, this is never going to take off. This thing is out of control. Uh, it's everywhere you go. Everybody's talking about Lisa, everybody, every station. And I work on five, six different stations. Everybody tries to copy what you do. Everybody's trying to be you. And you got to be yourself. But yeah. the, t the lines that you touch, you have no idea. Uh, uh, don't make me cry, you guys. It's tremendous. It's terrible. It's <laughs> tremendous. Dave's over there in the corner thinking, what? No. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, but thank you. You know, I met someone. I actually didn't even bring this up. Yesterday, after the seven-hour photo shoot that I did, which I loved, I went to an American Cancer Society event straight from the photo shoot for three hours up here in, in Boca for the Relay for Life. And J Dog, which put it all together, I'll give him a shout out. He pulled me aside and he said, You know, he's been on the radio, I think, for yes, like has. 25 years yeah. or something. He said, Lisa, I'm watching what you're doing and I'm looking at everything you're posting. And I just want you to know, and you're going to laugh at this. Don't let the haters and the jealous people bring you down because there's a lot of them out there. I don't think there's any. No, and I told him that. I said, let me tell you, I have like a shield up of positive energy and none of that ever bothers me because I love what I do and if they want to hate, let them hate. I'll turn it into love. <laughs> you know, it's better, to be, it's better for people to chase you than you chase people. So 
if they want to be haters, you know, that's on them. You know, karma yeah. is a B. So whatever happens, mm -hmm. it happens. But again, what you have done, I can tell you firsthand, I'm amazed. And oh, I've been in this business you. over 20 years. I've never seen anything like what's happening now. This thing has like a life of its own. Well, and you know why? And uh, everyone here on this panel could agree with me, of course. <laughs> no, but really, because you believe in it. Gratitude, giving back, believing in yourself, and doing mm -hmm. good things for other people, and putting mm -hmm. it out there, it comes back to you for sure. Yeah. That's not why we do it, but uh, anything, and manifestation, and intentions, and creating mm -hmm. positive energy positive energy will surround you for yeah, sure yeah. so what i like to talk about with self-love and i want to hear from all of you what i tell my clients is to meditate to go within to be kind and loving to themselves silly little things like wake up in the morning look in the mirror and say i love you to yourself mm -hmm. what are other ways that you all would teach people because that's the question i get all the time how do i learn how to love myself more so go ahead you start i think uh honestly it's right Ronnie. now um we have basically music is a great tool that i utilize uh for people there's musicians out there especially if we have a great community here locally of musicians that are in tune to life and their message comes across so like for myself like um uh, when i was first waking up i was spending a lot of time just listening to the music of of the artists here locally sarah's music telekinetic walrus afro beta and that right there like just constantly listening to that and just having those little reminders mm -hmm. of who you who you are yeah I that, love that that was really really helpful and it's like also like painters it's like you know you look at a painter's artwork uh that's a spiritual painter and then you just start asking yourself questions from that mm -hmm. and that just starts starts to help move things along yeah i love that cool. and sarah what do you think i love what ronnie said about the music because it really is effective right mm -hmm. all of this art that everyone's creating with this message you know it works so right. if we put it in front of our face it reminds us of that but i feel like <clears throat> self-love is almost like the choice of deciding to be positive it's a similar thing so we have this power within us right we can we can choose to enjoy anything we can also choose to love ourselves mm -hmm. so we'll be going throughout our day and i like to uh, suggest seeing yourself as like a two-year-old a three-year-old a child so you do something you get upset something's going on and instead of like being upset with yourself you just talk to yourself like oh baby girl mm -hmm. you know like I'm right here you know what do you uh. need like, I have everything that you need and like you said it's it's that meditative center that you access mm -hmm. that gives everything you need right to the one that's not loving themselves but then you become that role also that's oh, loving love that, that. that person that mm -hmm. you're not loving that's beautiful okay Sue go ahead give us your how would you tell people to love themselves more uh, well for me um my path in self-love has been really about self-acceptance and the more I've accepted myself and my strengths, my weaknesses, my quirks, and I've, you know, I've embraced and loved myself more. So, you know, when you look in the mirror and you, like you said in the morning, you say, I love you, you know, and, you can, and if you see the imperfections, you can choose to love the imperfections um, and choose to accept it. So, yeah, for me, it's acceptance and love kind of go hand in hand when you you know regards to um me just embracing who i am mm -hmm. right for sure okay dave seafood dave in the corner how do you tell people how to love themselves more well, this is a superman kind of an embarrassing <laughs> little subject for me oh I, god I guess he I, loves himself more than I anyone can in the confide, world i can confide in everybody <laughs> that chapter 17 of the llama book all 89 chapters i i just never got it i I still don't even know what self-love really is. I, 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 I had a big problem with even grasping the concept of what. I, I, I think frankly, I, I, I can't even really prove that I exist. So I can't really love myself or even acknowledge that. You know, we're we're even conscious. I always use the analogy that, you know, the universe ended 25 and a half billion years ago. And this is just a memory God is having of what could have happened to us when we were there, if we were there. Which is an easy way to make things positive. Mm. Make your memories of what's going on now positive. Right. Because this isn't really happening. And I really palpably feel that way. And I really don't acknowledge myself as a, a person worthy 
of love or even any attention to myself. I, you know, I'm not a person of affectation. Or, I mean, it's a, it's a very strange concept for me. Even particularly as a lama, I I don't I don't get the whole self love perspective. Well, I think maybe you you do. I mean, me being friends with you for like almost three years, every time I have an issue and I talk to you about it, the way that you talk to me about thinking positive and changing your thinking, everything you're talking about almost is self-love. Well, it's self-love for you or self-love for Sarah or <laughs> self-love for Freddie. Or, but I, I don't... I'm just telling people how I think. Mm -hmm. I'm just... I don't really have a point of view. I just tell you how I think. Well, this is what I look at. This is what I look at. That, you know, if you're first person all the time, maybe it's hard to have, you know, I, I, I really always have But Dave, that's a point of view. It's a point of view, right. <laughs> I, I've always had a, an impediment with understanding, grasping. To me, self-love seemed to be a little self-absorbed or self-focused. And uh, it, it really did. It really okay, did. let's get a rebuttal over yeah. here. Come I on. Because I, <laughs> I really, there might be things I don't know. This, this is ahead, the thing I have Sarah, to confess. I don't let's know. hear Maybe what Sarah you have to say. Me. Go ahead. This is exciting because when we say self-love, we can think of it in terms of the one self. Right? Just the being, just oh. the oneness, the, the universal source of everything. And so if we come from a standpoint of you exist, you exist, you exist, everyone is here, how can I most effectively love on them? And then it turns back to, okay, well, how can I most effectively be this love because they are me and I am them and we are all just this one self. Wow, that's, that's girls. That's great. how I feel. That's, that's how I feel all the time. I, I guess bringing it into focus was helpful. That was great. Yeah, I don't seem like the modern Buddhists, the neo-Buddhists say, well, we're all cells in the body of God. I'm mm. a cell, you're a cell. So it's hard for me. Like, I feel like if I love myself, I'm actually turning into a little cancerous cell, is my feeling. So okay. you're right, it's about the organism. Yeah, I love that. I, I, like, I like the way Dave teaches it, is that he says he doesn't know it, so that you're able to think about that, right. and then you present your perspectives the way Sarah just did. Yeah. And, and it makes you think inwardly to come outwardly. It's a very unique technique when you when you yeah. question and let others answer your questions because it helps you think about the truth. Right. And I think that also defines the whole love we have going in, the, in this room. It's so true. Mm -hmm. You just feed off of each other's energy. Go ahead, Sue. Well, I mean, you look out into just the animal kingdom and, you know, I think animals in it themselves exhibit self-love seamlessly because, like, you know, like a gorilla that's self-grooming or, or a dog just being a dog. They don't stand there and question who they are. They don't stand there and say, oh, I don't know if I like this about me. I don't know about this. Oh, I love this. You know, they just are who they are. And it is, it, it's expressed through love. They take care of themselves. They take care of, you know, their, um, you know, their, the, um, their, <laughs> children, I was going to say children, but, um. Their pack. So. Yeah, exactly. They're hurt. And They're trying. you know, depending on their nature or their solo and so they they are who they are and I think that's recognizing your worth as is self love, recognizing who you are as created by God, you know, and and when we do, that's when the divine love pours out and it's no it completely becomes unconditional because now you are a channel of this divine love and you love like you know, the Ascended Masters and the Buddhas and the Jesus, you know, the, it's no longer any conditional because you recognize yourself, your yeah. true self created by God. I love it. That's cool. Okay, so thank you. Yes, God, this Thanks. has been great. Thanks and it's already over. Right we have four <laughs> minutes left. So I want everyone to just say whatever you feel to our listeners. I want to hear Sarah sing. Yeah, oh, okay, so you instead of that, minutes. let's, we'll let's go ahead and sing something, something to heal, heal our listeners. <laughs> something you like to say, give us a resonance, something? Give, us an, give us a mantra. We have four minutes. Nice, well, I like this piece because it's the newest one, which is always my favorite, so I'll just do a, just a little chorus. <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> do you know it? Do you know it? Do you know, no, no, no? We are humanity and the earth is a family. All I have, I turn to you and give it 
When I taste heaven, you'll be at the banquet. We got the capacity, we able to organize, put this spread on the table. I got a will, I'll give it to you. My work, my thoughts, all I say and do. Want to go to your happiness. My dear love, Lord, you're my lineage. So that's a, there you go. a little part yeah. of one of the songs. When you started singing, I started getting chills everywhere. I love it. Oh, I love it. It's Isn't beautiful. that cool? You talk about being touched by God's fingertip. Yeah. People that can sing. It's an amazing deal, man. Amazing, amazing stuff. All right, we got three minutes. Okay, three minutes. Go, Dave. Go, Ronnie. Give us a 30 seconds, everybody. <laughs> 30 seconds of, just that of I healing seen, the world. Go for it. It's just simple. It's just remember just to have fun with everything you do. <clears throat> the world is just a big playground that we live in. And once you start seeing it like that, then you can. Play, play along with this game and enjoy it. And it's like, however long you're going to be here, you might as well have fun while you're doing it. Yes, for sure. Go, Dean. I'll be brief and let Sue finish up. But I, you know, what she talked about the animals and how, you know, animals look out for their pack and their herd and their tribe. And, um, you know, that's the way I think most of us truly feel inside. We, you know, we see some child uh, who's upset, we go to that child. You know, we see a disaster on the news and we want to help. So that's the natural instinct in us, our spiritual instinct. And I'll let Sue finish. Okay, go, go for it, Sue. Okay, um, yes, yeah, so finishing, just take a, a moment, um, closing your eyes and saying, filling your heart, just even for just a second, and in the moment, I choose love. And just, just practice that, you know, throughout the day as you go along. You know, and choosing love, just going back to it, reminding yourself that we have a choice. And as Sarah said, fun and humor. Fun and humor. The Dalai Lama said humor. Fun and humor. You know, humor is very disarming. Yeah. Shatters through walls and obstacles. So as our our panel pointed out, fun and and humor and and joy and love. And we got one minute. Go ahead, Freddie. You got 10 seconds. No, it's yours. (laughs) Okay, what I would like to say is thank you all so much. This is spiritually moving and uplifting, and I feel the love in this room. What I would like to say is just be kind and loving to yourselves and give yourself a big hug every day and enjoy life and live in the moment here and now. Forget about yesterday. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just live and be and be happy Tune in next week to transform your mind, body, spirit with Lisa. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Bye, Sue. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in today and starting your very own journey through transformation. Don't wait to get the perfect weight, the perfect mate, or the perfect job to become happy. Be happy today. Lisa will continue to help guide you weekly to become more mindful and to live in the now. Feed your body healthy and nutritious foods. Get your body moving and feed your mind with positive affirmations. With a positive mind, your body will react accordingly. Be here next Sunday or visit her website at any time at Lisa Dwoski.